12 won't let you know that, but if they get out of hand, I will call them out from the pulpit. Amen, Brother Curtis. Because I love you and we don't do the distraction thing around here very well because we're here uh, serious about praising and worshiping the Lord, serious about the Word of God. And uh, we don't mind children in the sanctuary. That's what you like and that's what we like, but we like them quiet and you got to like that too. Hallelujah. That goes for adults as well. You know, if you go to sleep, well, glory. I, I hate it for you, but when you start messing with your neighbor all the time, you keep, I'm, I'm finna come get you. Um, I don't, we don't do that around here. We, we about the word. We need to be hearing the word, learning the word. Faith can't come if we're not hearing the word. And amen, Brother Curtis. Everybody doing good? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, uh, I'm just glad to be here this morning. I know you are. I'm always glad to see you. And uh, we're going to be getting into the Word here in just a minute concerning uh, the topic we've been preaching, believing to see reality, that you have to believe to see the things of God you don't get to see and then believe you have to believe and then you get to see. But first of all, because I know our messages are always archived, and I need to let you know that on www.thecrosswaychurch.com. You can go pull up all our messages probably within the last year, 16, uh, two years maybe. And, uh, and you can watch them free. So when we offer CDs at a dollar a piece after the first free one or the DVDs for $5, we're not after your money. We're just letting you know that you have those available to you. Uh, but you can always go watch in the archives and that's free. You can even download from there and make your own CD or DVD if you've got the knowledge to do that. <clears throat> but also, because most people who aren't here don't go to church here, they, they watch uh, off away somewhere else, and they pull up the archives, and they watch the messages. And so they never get to see, a, they never get the opportunity to uh, hear uh, when we receive an offering. So I encourage you, if you're listening to this message today and you're somebody that listens to Crossway Church all the time, then I encourage you to sow into this ministry and watch what God will do for your life. I also want you to be aware that we have a nine CD set called Taking Up Your Cross, Taking Up Our Cross, that you need to understand what that means. That your cancer, your sickness, your car wreck, your, your all these hard things are not your cross. The cross, there's only one. Jesus died on it for you, and you died on it with him. There's only one cross. And this series that we're offering for $25 will help the support the ministry, and it will support you greater than you would have ever imagined, learning what it really means to take up your cross and that you can't be a disciple without doing that. You can't see without doing that. You can't have daily bread without doing that. You can't have anything from the Lord without a daily cross. So it's very important that you understand what that means, and that's why we've made this series available to you. If you'll go ahead and turn to uh, the book of Luke, chapter 24, this will be part three of uh, a message we've entitled Believing to See Reality. And uh, I want you to go ahead, and when you get to Luke 24, uh, verse 44, just say Amen. Boy, y'all are quick this morning, aren't you? Bible scholars indeed here. And I thank the Lord for uh, turning pages in the church. Uh, I thank the Lord for that, that we can see for those who might have accidentally forgot their Bibles today or, or whatever the case might be, but I love to hear the sound of turning pages. Uh, we need to be in the Word. We need to be a people of the Word of God. It's the only way we can be living by faith because the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God in Romans 10, 17. And so uh, we're going to move on into this message today. But before we read this scripture, I've got to make this, this foundational point that I made when we began this message, and it's this. There's only one way you can receive spiritual eyesight. Amen. And that spiritual eyesight is given through your faith in what Jesus did at Calvary. If your faith is in that, you've been given eyesight. Jesus told Nicodemus in uh, John 3, verses 3 and 5, and verse 3 tells him, uh, unless you're born again, you can't see the kingdom. In verse 5 he says, unless you're born again, you can't enter the kingdom. So you have not eyes to see anything of the Lord until you believe. Then you get eyes to see. 
And those eyes will allow you to begin to understand the word as long as your faith remains in what gave you eyesight. If you move your faith into now that you're not really saved and man will lie to you and tell you you're not really saved unless you're water baptized or you're not really saved unless you do this, this, and this, then you go blind again when you believe that. We are water baptized for obedience sake to prove, a te- to give a testimony of what has already happened in our hearts. We were saved. We were crucified with Christ, buried with Christ, raised up in newness of life with Christ. Amen. So we understand from scriptures, John 3, that we can't see anything. We're blind until we believe the gospel, which is the message of the cross. And then in 2 Peter 1 and 9, Peter writes this, that if these things, if you lack these things, and he's talking about adding love to virtue and virtue to knowledge and all these things, talking about the Holy Spirit at work in our lives, if these thing, if you lack these things, you're blind, it says, because you have forgotten that you were purged from your old sins. That doesn't mean it's just no longer there. It means you have trusted in something else. You have forgotten that and you've gone on to what most of the church today calls the new thing. There is no new thing outside of the cross. It's the one thing God did to make all new that will believe. Amen. So we've already established in the foundational part of this message this morning, the one way you see is through the blood. The one way, only one way you go blind is by putting your faith in something other than the blood. So let me add this. If you're going through life and you're living like a blind man, You just can't get it right. You just can't seem to be obeying God. You can't be in church. You're not in the Word. There's no fruit in your life. You're blind no matter what your words say. It's not your words that matter. It's your heart. Jesus said they draw near me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. When you believe in the heart, your eyes are opened to the truth. And not only the truth, but your eyes are open now to what is not truth. See, that's what they, the church doesn't like about these folks who are always talking about the cross again. That, that's old hat. That's old, man, you need to get a part of this new stuff. Let me tell you, everybody who will tell you that is blind spiritually. I don't care how big their church is, how much the big the praise and worship the orchestra is. I don't care how much money, millions and millions flowing through there. If they're not preaching the cross, it's because he's blind. And he's helping the people remain blind. You've got to have a cross to see. You've got to have a cross to see. Jesus said that you must to follow me. If you're going to follow him, you've got to deny yourself, take up your cross daily, and follow Jesus. Why? Because it takes a cross to see him, and you can't follow the one you can't see. You can't follow who you can't see, and you can't see him without your faith in his cross. See how kindergarten that is. So it doesn't matter what your words say. Well, my faith is in the cross, brother. And your life is just chaotic and drama, and there's no order there. Everything's not being done decent in order, and you're still watching this and listening to that and hanging out with them and listening to that and telling all that. You, my friend, have forgotten just because you say, no, I hadn't forgotten that. Remember, it's not about your lip service. It's about your surrendered heart service. You have to surrender and, it, it, and let me tell you something about that place of surrender. It is a place where it's like somebody is standing over you and you're like, okay, I give up. It's not just a nonchalant thing, okay, I'll surrender today, Lord. No, he's going to drive you into a place where you're going to have to find out how bad you really need to surrender. And you know what? You can just come to that understanding today that you are nothing, you have nothing, you are headed nowhere without Jesus. You are nothing, you are blind, you're without hope. Even as a child of God, you can go blind. You can marry the wrong guy, the wrong gal over and over and over and you can be stuck in a rut because you say the right things but your heart won't believe the right thing. When you come to Christ through faith in what he did for you at Calvary, that's not lip service, my friend. That's a heart service to God. That's where we surrender. The Bible says 
the, the, the man believes unto righteousness with the heart. And I know what I'm talking about. For I got saved when I was 11. Until I was 33, I lived like a devil. But I knew I got saved. But what was wrong with me? I was blind. My faith was not in the cross. Oh, if you asked me was I saved and how I got saved, I'd surely tell you those words because at one time I believed that, but I was not believing that every day. I was believing that I wanted to do what I wanted to do above and beyond what Christ wanted for me. Because what happens when I truly have my faith in the cross, I'm living according to this Bible. Am I perfect? No, but I'm living according to the Word and I'm not making excuses for my sin. Amen, Brother Curtis. So we're established already. I begin to see, I receive sight because God gave me eyesight when I believed in what Christ did for me at Calvary. And the way I lose my eyesight, and I didn't say salvation, I said my eyesight. We can go blind. If we don't fight to keep our faith in the cross. And you will fight to keep it there or it will not stay there. You will fight the good fight of faith. Which means just you're not fighting against sin. Sin's already been defeated. The devil's already been defeated. Your fight is one to keep your faith in the cross. And when you do, God will fight for you. God will provide for you. God will bless you when you do. And you'll know where you're going. And you'll know from where you came. And you'll know those who are going this way with you. And you'll know those who aren't. Doesn't mean we start judging them, condemning them. Means we just keep telling the truth. Because the truth keeps you moving forward. So we see in Luke chapter 24, now that we know how we see and how we go blind. We see in Luke 24, verse 44, this is after Jesus is resurrected from the dead. He's walking along the road with the two guys on the road to Emmaus. And he said to them, after, you know, he found them in a victim, victimized place. They, they had had their hopes in Jesus, and then they're like, oh, well, I guess he wasn't really the one. We thought he was, but here we are. He's gone. And he finds them there in verse 44. He says to them, These are the words which I spoke unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms. How many of you know that's the Old Testament, all of it? Concerning me. The Bible is about Jesus. If we're not preaching and teaching the Word of God in the context of Jesus, we have not been sent by God. Preachers, unless somebody gave me a CD last week at work of some preacher from Brodus, Texas, wherever that is at. And and, and, and they didn't really want me to listen to it for the sake of what was on it. They just said they found it, so they brought it to a preacher. (laughs) So I stuck it in and listened to it, and it was the most psychological. It was this preacher telling men what to do to, to keep their marriage alive and telling the women what they have to do to keep their marriage alive and not one time did he mention the cross and I hope you understand that if I come together and we get together and I just tell you what y'all better be doing instead of pointing you to what Christ did for you then you'll leave out of here and you ain't gonna have received anything these people who hold six-week marriage seminars and then you watch those marriages fall in divorce it's because there's no power there There's no power in me telling you you need to be in church. There ain't no power in that. There ain't no power in me telling you you got got to love your wife. You got to treat her. Go tell her every day how much you appreciate her. Now you ought to be doing that. But that ain't going to make you. Listen, you need Jesus in your marriage or you're going to be miserable. And he can't get in that marriage without a cross. He can't get in there. Well, I got Jesus, brother. We're going to make it. No, you're not going to make it. Blind people don't make it. I I told this as the example. If I put Robin on the goal line of a football field and blindfolded her and put stuff in her ears where she couldn't hear and said, now go to the other end of the football field. Go to the other goal line. 
<coughs> I promise you, before she got to the 50-yard line, she'd be done turned around going back the other way. We can't even go a straight line in the woods, can we, Brother Gene? And we'll put you out there in the woods and say, five miles, no compass, no nothing. You're going to be hard-pressed to make it out that other side. You're going to get out there and get turned around. That's what a blind man does. I've been out in the woods, been lost. I lived in Germany one time. My mama took me to the bus stop that morning. I was in the second grade. She was a mile from the house. It was just one mile. Took me up there and let me out. And I said, Mama, I can find my way home this evening. You don't even have to come back and get me. You know, second grade, I knew everything. <laughs> and she didn't come back. I got you. You got this. All right. Time she found me, it was dark. And I was sitting there, done gave up crying on the street corner. <laughs> Looked like one of them little holy cost Jews. Just all, I mean, it, I've been lost before. Been lost in big grocery stores. Just running around frantic. You ever been, you ever been lost, a kid? When you was a kid, get lost in a, some big old grocery store and just done running, looking down every aisle. Robin gets mad at me when my boys, when I, when they, they're not anymore, but when they used to be little, they'd wander off in Walmart. And I'm not running all over looking for them. I'm just going to start hollering, Hey! Andrew, no. She's like, shh. I said, I don't care. <laughs> it's easy to lose your way. It's easy to lose your way. Spiritually speaking, it's easy to lose your way. You can lose your way. I know people right now who are walking along with us in this truth who are now hanging out with Joseph Prince preaching that demonic mess. Walked with us in this. Got carried away. It's easy to get carried away. You know what number one most of the time does it? Offense. People get offended. Let me tell you something this morning about offense. And I didn't come to preach on offense. But once you get offended, that's how you see everything. That's how you look at everything. Until you get that offense out of your heart, that's how you see everything. That's how you deal with everybody. Through that offended heart. And all you got to do is come back to Calvary. And the Lord himself can heal that offended heart. I'm glad of that because we all get offended. That's why we need a daily cross so we can see. Let me, t- let me tell you something. It's only the people who see who are going to come to repentance. Because the people who don't come to repentance are the people who say, I don't see the need to. We live based on how we see things. God gave you the eyes you needed as a new creation. We were blind, dead, separated from God as the old men that God found us in. But thank God he sent his son. He crucified himself for us on the cross. And he crucified that old blind man and buried him. And when Jesus came out of the grave, guess who came out with him? Seeing new creations. Seeing. We see now. We're no longer blind. I was blind, but I ain't blind no more. Hallelujah. It's important that you guard your heart. People are going to hurt your feelings. People are going to say things about you. They're going to do things to you. You're going to do things to yourself. Other people aren't your biggest disappointment in life. You are. If you're honest with yourself, I'm my biggest disappointment of my own self. You know what I see when I disappoint myself or others disappoint me? I begin to look at Jesus and how he's never disappointed me and how he died for me on an old rugged cross when I was nothing but a disappointment to God. And he saved me because he loved me and that is above everything else. When my mind runs rampant today and just like yours does, I just begin to praise God for his love and his goodness and his mercy like we sang this morning. It's above everything. Hallelujah. And you've got to fight to keep your faith in that. Because things are coming your way to knock you off track. The devil's going to come and try to tear you down, tear you apart. And your faith is not based on what other people do. It's based on what you believe. What you believe is going to give you eyes to see. David said in the book of Psalms chapter 27, and you know David had more problems than all of us. Then he had wives that 
tried to stab him in the back. One of his own sons tried to take his kingdom. David, David was anointed by God to be the king of Israel, and Saul was trying to kill him. David had hard times, and David come to a place where he said, I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Every day you have to live your life in a way that no matter what they say, no matter what they do, how they look at you, how they start things about you, you have to through that believe, keep believing to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You got to keep, it doesn't matter what they say, what they do. It doesn't even matter what we say and do. Glory to God. That's not a license to sin. That's a license to repent we've been given and to get up and go on with Jesus. But only those who have eyes to see will do that. People who stay in the mother grub and they're always a victim. They don't know the truth because the truth frees from that. Knowing the truth. What's the truth? It's Jesus, isn't it? And what he did at Calvary. Jesus is not your truth without the cross. It cannot be your truth. The cross is the application of all that Jesus died for you to be able to have. Only through the cross can you walk in it and have it. But look in verse 45, Luke 24. Then he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. That they might understand what? The scriptures. Why is it important we understand the scriptures? Because it is the knowledge of God. And we're to be growing in the knowledge and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that only comes through the scriptures. That does not come by things going on out in the world. You're not learning about God through things going on out in the world. You're learning about Him through the Word. Amen. And the church is throwing the Word away. It's writing all these new versions that take out the deity of Christ, the deity of Christ, and, they, and, and all these new versions, and they don't point to the cross. Well, I just don't like the King James Version. You know, it's just all those thou's and shouts, and that ain't why they don't want it. King James, just too hard to understand. It is not hard to understand. He has promised to open your understanding. Is he a liar? No. He will open your understanding of the Scriptures. That means he will give you sight. The Word of God will become a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. You will be able to walk in the light as he is in the light. The Word of God can be understood. Not just by preachers, but by anybody who believes. He opens our understanding. God has to open our understanding. What's that mean? That means he opens our eyesight to what he's really said. Because what he's really said is what he really means. And don't forget, what he's really said, this book we call the Bible, the Holy Word of God, is all about the living Word of God, Jesus. He said that. You search the scriptures for in them. You say you have life, but they are they which testify of me, Jesus said. So we got to be talking about Jesus, singing about Jesus, preaching about Jesus, telling somebody about Jesus, giving to a church that points to Jesus. Not just has a good website, has Jesus on there, but when they get in the pulpit, they ain't preaching money, they ain't preaching marriage, they're preaching Jesus. Well, I need to know how to have a better marriage. Come to Christ. All these, I just can't get away. All these marriage seminars, it ain't doing a lick of good. We just get together and I tell you, Brother Glenn, how to, how to can y'all tell us James' brother? <laughs> if you can't, you blind. <laughs> Great to have y'all this morning. Now, where was I going? Yeah, Brother Glenn, you interrupted me again. <laughs> He's a blessing. If we just get together and I tell you, love your wife as Christ loved the church, and you submit to your husband, and y'all submit to each other, you get out there in that car before you get out of the parking lot. <clears throat> <laughs> Whining, arguing. And one of you say, you hate what the preacher said. And it ain't about what the preacher said. It's about what lo the Lord's telling you. 
And you know what he's telling you? Look to the cross and live. Look to the cross and let your marriage be what it should be. You can't, I can't love my wife unless my faith is in what Christ did for me. Oh, I can be affectionate toward her and have a worldly love. But I can't love her with the love God should have brought in my heart to be able to love her with unless my faith is in the cross. And I ain't talking about word service. I ain't talking about cause I, because I got born again one time. Born again folks are getting divorced as much as the world today. And it's because they don't know the truth. They are blind. And it takes two seeing people to stay married. It takes two seeing people. And there is no seeing without the cross. What's that mean? That ain't just words. That's me every day knowing that Christ died so I could be delivered from this gossiping tongue, this griping, murmuring thing that I've seemed to have a problem with for 30 years. I can be delivered. I don't have to stay in this mess. I can be delivered. He died to deliver me. He he crucified that murmuring tongue. He crucified that drug addiction. He he crucified that griping and complaining. He did that then 2,000 years ago. And if I'll keep my faith in that, the Spirit of God will give me power to walk in a victorious place. I can't do it myself. You're not going to run down to the Lifeway bookstore and find a book on how to have a successful marriage and and, and, and do it because it ain't going to happen. Because ain't nothing in books down there going to tell you to put your faith in the cross. They're going to tell you to do this, 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 and this. And she's got to do this, 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 and this, and this. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to bury yourself up. You're going to be expecting things out of each other. Just works, works, works. And all I'm expecting from my wife is that she keeps trusting Jesus just like I am. And he'll keep running our marriage. The Bible says our marriages are supposed to represent, be symbolic of Christ's relationship with the church. He loves his church. He gave himself for his church. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we see here, he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And said unto them, here comes, what he's saying is, is, is what is about to open their understanding of the scriptures. That means he's about to give them eyesight, but look how it's going to come. Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Did you see that? That's what opens our understanding of the scriptures. Nothing else does God use to open your understanding of the scriptures outside the cross. We see the Word of God through the cross and understand it. Or we see the Word of God through whatever else and we stay blind and ignorant of it. And I'm not being ugly this morning, but the biggest majority of every man or woman that calls himself a preacher in these last days we're living in, they're not stupid, but they're ignorant of what I'm telling you this morning. And ignorant just means there's things they don't know. And it's a very dangerous thing to hear ministers preaching the truth and you claim to be a minister and you say that ain't right we're not going down that avenue because what we preach here the message of the cross is the only thing that makes the devil run away from you when he comes to attack amen he will eat you up he will eat your health he will he will and God won't stop him well it gets quiet on that don't it My people perish for lack of knowledge. The enemy comes to roar as a lion, seeking whom he may devour. Who can he devour? The blind that don't know that's a roaring lion who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. A blind man can be told that that roar is something other than the devil. And he don't know because he's blind. You can be devoured. Your marriage can be devoured. Your children can be devoured. Your children can be worse than you ever thought of being. But we have a promise from the Lord. If you train your children up in the way they should go, they won't depart from it. What is the way? He's got a name. The one who showed up and said, I am the way. His name is Jesus. If we raise our children up, train our children up, not in the church, 
in the way. That means we got to be here in the cross. we got to have the cross preached to our children all the way because God has promised if we preach the way, train them up in the way, which is the way of Jesus and his cross, they won't depart from it. If all we, Man, if I had a dollar for every woman that told me and asked me to pray for her kids because they've gone wayward and they're out in the world living in sin just horribly and, I, and they don't understand why because they had them in church every day of their life, every weekend, and I have to tell a mama, the way is not church, the way is Jesus and what he did at Calvary and we got everybody in every city in America got kids filling the churches with pool tables and ping pong tables and so they can meet boys and girls and do all that stuff and, and go here and do that and events and programs and they ain't preaching the cross to them that's why when they get old enough to run out and go crazy they do just that and mama says I just don't understand what happened to my babies because mama is blind and she don't know the way and if mama don't know the way Baby girl and baby brother ain't going to know the way. Because if the devil gets to our kids, he comes right through us to get them. Oh, I heard I said that one time years ago, and a woman on the front row growled at me like a dog. I'm not making that up, I'm telling you that. And she was an elder in the church. But her kids were wayward, and she didn't like hearing that. But I tell you what, I got a Bible and I got a God that can't lie. These are promises I'm talking about. If you train your children up in the way they should go, lean not unto your own understanding. Oh! Yeah. But if you, listen, our own understanding is what's destroying our kids today. Because we won't just throw the book on the table like I did in 1994 and said, I don't know much about anything that's in that book, but I know the answer is in that book from this day forward. We're going to live according to this book. And that was from June 1994. And we've been living according to this book. Have we got everything right and all, but we're still living by this book. Because this book is the Word of God, and the Word of God is God. And God became flesh. His name is Jesus. And He dwelt among us. And I'm telling you what, if you're following Him, you've beheld the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. And now you're learning what the way is and that your kids are desperate for it. Hallelujah. We're raising up a generation of kids right now that don't care about anything except music and that old worldly demonic mess and just having their way. They don't want to work. They don't want to do anything. They just want everything given to them because they don't know the Bible. They don't know God. And it's up to us, mamas and daddies. It's up to us to tell them the truth, to train them up in it. I don't care if they want to go to church. You just keep dragging them in here. I don't care if they want to go to that church. You just keep dra bringing them in here. Why is that? Because we don't play games. We just tell the truth. This is a matter of life and death. Do you understand? Eternity is forever, and you get one shot at it. You get one shot at it. God forbid we go to heaven and our children are separated from us for eternity and we never even recollect who they were or that we even had children. God wants us all in heaven. He wants us all to be saved. I understand that there are ministers who are lying out there that say, God, he, he didn't really send his son to die for everybody, but they don't know the Bible. Je the Bible says Jesus tasted uh, uh, death by the grace of God for all men. That don't mean all men's going, but he did it for all men. The Word of God is where we get our vision from. And God says people perish without a vision, but there's no vision without the blood. We only see through the blood. So the people who are perishing, who have no vision, are the people whose faith is not in the cross. You know how easy it is just to think, just to get in a rut of going to some church and thinking, God owe you something now for being in church every week. God don't owe us nothing for nothing. He ain't in the owing business. But he's in the blessed business, and he said, hallelujah. He said, if I didn't spare my own son, but I delivered him up for everybody, how shall I not with him? But you've got to be with him. Freely give you everything. But those things don't just happen. People have come into this church and say, uh, preacher don't need a house like that. Well, I ain't got no big old house. Every door in my house gets opened every day. Except maybe two closets. One. One closet. Some guy cut our yard last week. Not last week, but sometime last year maybe or sometime recently. And 
You know how Brother Swagger did last week, five years ago? Huh? <laughs> Happens when you get older. But it was last year, maybe. Was it not last year, maybe? Yes, it was. He, he, I got somebody here as a witness now. <laughs> Found out a preacher lived out there in our little old house. Preacher don't need to be living nothing like this. Blind. Where you want me to live? Out there in a the cardboard box? <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> Keep the foot on me. All he does is preach. He had no idea that I also worked 40 hours a week. But even if I didn't, and this is all I did was ministry, God called me to do it. It's a job. Greater, I guarantee you, whoever that fellow was, he followed me around for a week. He'd be saying, I don't want none of that. Blind. Blind. If we're not training our children up in the way they should go, we're blind. If the excuse you give is just words. The reality of it is blindness. Don't let them get so old, Mom and Daddy. It's too late. There's a promise if you train them up in that. I said a promise, and God ain't never broke one promise. He never broke one. Never will. Hallelujah. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5. I know the Lord's tugging on hearts today. I know the Lord is trying to bring his people back to this narrow place. Jesus said it's so narrow, it's going to be few that find it. Most are out there on the road to destruction. You know that road is not always whiskey and drugs and promiscuous sex with everybody. Tell. That wide road that leads to destruction is many religious churches. Because people, listen, people think they're on their way and they're not on their way. They're dying. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Scripture we all know. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, that means he's born again, that means he's trusted in what Christ did at Calvary, for that's the only way we can be in Christ, not just because we in some church. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, it may be 10, 15 years before you get a revelation of this, but I pray God would give you a revelation today of this, what he's trying to get you to understand here today, that you're going to have to look through Calvary to see the new creation that God has made. I know ministers are lying to people all over the world, telling them there's a champion in you. Talking about you, you ain't no champion, honey. You ain't no champion. There is a champion in you. His name is Jesus. All these books written about becoming a better you, you can't become a better you. Not going to happen. And the only way that you can live more godly is if the Holy Spirit is working in your life and He won't unless you're believing the truth. Now hang on. Are you with me, Mo? God only works in the truth. He doesn't work in any... God does not work in mysterious ways. You know, it sounds so good, don't it? <laughs> God works in mysterious ways. No, He doesn't. He works in the truth. Psalms 33, 4, if you will. I want us to all see that, Sister Tracy. You've only seen it once or twice. More than three or four hundred times. Because this is quite a revelation. If you know that truth is Jesus, but it took the cross for that truth to make you free. Jesus said when you know the truth, the truth will make you free. If it took Jesus and the cross for truth to make you free, then we know what truth is. Christ and Him crucified. That's the truth that when we know makes us free. 
For the word of the Lord is right. Curtis is not right. You're not right. God's word is right. And all. Everybody say all. All All his works are done in truth. And when you put your faith in the truth, which is Christ and him crucified, God begins to work on your behalf. He opens your eyes and sets you on a narrow path and calls it a race and says you can now run the race because you can see to run. But he only works in truth because the Bible, I'm a Bible believer this morning. Don't come up to me after church and say, well, brother, because I'm going to say, well, brother. No, sir. God's word is God's word and it will not budge an inch. We're the one that's going to have to budge to conform to what he said. It's his word that's right. And all his works are done in truth. His word is truth. John 17, Jesus prayed to the Father, Thy word is truth, but it's only truth to us if we see it through the cross. If we're not seeing it through the cross, I hate to say this, but it's real. We're using it in a witchcrafty kind of way, a voodoo-ish kind of way. You can't just go around quoting the scripture expecting God to move on your behalf. That don't work. God don't work on anything you do. He works through what you believe. And when you were born again, God gave you eyes to see what you need to be seeing. Two places in the New Testament, Hebrews 2 and 9 and Hebrews 12 and 2, both talk about seeing Jesus, both talk about the cross. But we see Jesus, Hebrews 2, 9, made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. Hebrews 12, 2, what does it say? Hebrews 12, 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith who endured the cross. You see, and what God is trying to get us to understand is we don't have to look back to Calvary and try to picture and imagine some bloody corpse there hanging on the tree. That's not this whole ideal of truth. The ideal of truth is, and looking unto Jesus, is to look at what he provided there for you. He crushed the devil's head. He justified you. He sanctified you. He put you in him. Not some something you have to, well, I'm just trying to picture how hard it must have been on Jesus, and how, how bloody he must. No, no that ain't going to get you nowhere. It's believing what he did there for you. When he died on that cross, I want you to know, at that moment of his death, the devil had the power of death stripped away from him. Hebrews 2.14 tells you that if you're a Bible believer. Wasn't the resurrection. People, man, here lately they've been trying to ride me hard about you just need to be preaching more of the resurrection, brother. Why? You know why they preached it in the book of Acts early? Because they didn't have what God gave Paul yet. And in that day, people had seen Jesus. And now he's alive again. Paul did not say the preaching of the resurrection is the power of God. He said the preaching of the cross is the power of God. Ain't it? The resurrection's important. But the resurrection took place because the work at Calvary was complete. The resurrection was a declaration of a perfect sacrifice taking place and being finished. Jesus quoting it. It is finished. And because he finished atoning right there on the cross for all our sins, he was raised from the dead. But the power is what took place at Calvary. That's where the power is at. The power of the resurrection was the power of the cross. That's why you and I are told to look to Calvary. Look to Jesus. It ain't trying to imagine a brown-headed man, Jew, with green eyes and just picture a man. No, it's look at what God did for you on the tree in his son. He freed you from sin. He freed you from everything that would ever attack you and come against you. He freed you. You don't have to have another drink of that. You don't have to take another hit off of that. You don't have to. Man, you've been made free. Free. Man, them shouting words there. Free. Free. 
You don't, we don't understand how tightly we were. We weren't just in a prison cell. We were chained up and locked up and tied and shoved over in a corner. Corner. We were locked up and tied up and bound in a corner, and we had the door locked on us. No way. No way. You couldn't even look outside. You and I didn't even know there was freedom until Jesus showed up. We thought this is just the way it's going to be. You know, you hear people that are blind say it. Well, it's just who I am. They can't see no light because they're just in dark. Christians get in that condition because they forget about what Christ did for them at Calvary. Oh, they will never say it, but they're proving it by the way they live. It's a given. It's a, it's, it is a concrete absolute that when you place your faith in what Christ did for you at Calvary, grace comes to your life. And grace is not something that just exists to keep you in sin. It empowers you because it is God himself working and giving you freedom and liberty. But I want to bring this point out about verse 17 before we quit today. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. I'm thankful to be a new creature this morning. I'm not who I used to be. When I go back to my hometown, people say, my Lord, you've changed. You ain't nothing like you used to be. That's because I ain't the same guy. I'm telling you, it is a radical change. Yes, we still live in this body, but we, our soul and our spirit, man, we've been saved. God gave me a new heart. He gave me a new spirit. I'm a new creation in Christ. Amen. I'm talking about new. It don't get no newer than that. And when you look in the mirror, you might say, well, I don't look very new. No, because that old thing you're living in, it's going to perish. But that ain't who you are. That's, this is not who we are. We, we walked through some place yesterday in, uh, uh, out in Fort Worth, and, and we had to get, we were in some big mall, and we walked through like down in Dillard's, and all them women there trying to get just made up. And I said, hey, I know they need it, but boy, this is a vain world we live in. <laughs> and, and what's it going to be like one day when there ain't no makeup? And the beauty is going to be greater. No makeup, but the beauty is going to be greater. What a vain world we live in. We're all caught up in this. Got to go to the gym. Got to keep, ain't leaving the house unless the barn's painted. Can't, can't, can't. And you catch them in Walmart sometime, thinking they're going to get in there and get out without somebody seeing them. And some of them are so heavily made up, you don't, I don't even know who they are. I'll never forget being, and I, we got to get on with this. We got 10 minutes, but I got to tell this. I was sitting in this man's house one day, and, and, his, and his wife came out, and he asked, could she get us some water? This has been several years ago. And, and I was, when she came out, I was just about to ask him, where is your wife at? After I seen her. And I knew him. And right before I said that, he called her name. And I said. <laughs> totally. Totally. How'd y'all drag me into all that? 2 Corinthians 5, 17, the point the Lord wants us to get out of this this morning is the word behold. You've got to see it. You've got to see it. That's what God's telling us here. Look. See this. Look. Quit looking at everything. God's already told us in the Bible that it's the light afflictions that come to us. They work a far more exceeding weight of glory. While we look not at them, but at what we can't see. Do you understand that? While we, while we look not at the things that are attacking us and the things we don't like, while we refuse to look at them and look at what we can't see, which, which is who Jesus is and what he accomplished for us at Calvary, that's when they're working for us. I want those light afflictions instead of coming and killing me to be working on my behalf. And every light affliction, and God calls them light afflictions, even if we try to rephrase his terminology and call them heavy. 
He calls them light afflictions. And if I want them working on my behalf, which really is saying if I want God working on my behalf, because that's the only way they're going to work for me is through my faith in what he did for me at Calvary. Because that's the only way God's going to work in my life is through my faith in the truth, which is Christ and what he did for me at Calvary. And I know some people just don't like being that narrow-minded, but you're going to have to if you're a Bible believer. The reason that Christians don't like what I just said is because they've been so brainwashed and they've been taught all our lives that God was working in that, God was working in this. God was, and if it ain't the truth, my friend, I showed you in the Bible where we're going to have to admit we were wrong. Can you admit today you've been wrong? If you can't, you can't ever learn anything new. We've got to be honest with ourselves. If we'll admit that we don't know everything, that's saying I need to learn something. But most times for me to learn something means I've got to let something go. I love my mama. I love my grandparents. I love all, all lots of people that's been in my life. But they don't agree with what the Bible says in some places. And I have to stick with them and not the, with the Bible and not them. If you stick with your loved ones, you're going to be in trouble. You know what happens, you know what happens when you put your loved ones above your obedience to Christ, that means you don't have a cross. You're not taking up a cross, and that's why you're blind. Because only blind people would put a spouse before Jesus. Only blind, only a blind person would put a kid before Jesus. Oh, we love our children dearly, and we die for our children, but we can't put them before Jesus. If we do, we're proving we're not, our faith is not in the cross. Our faith is in what I think I need to do. I know people right now who are out of church and away from the Lord and his plan for their life because they're trying to save their marriage. You can't save your marriage by doing what you think you need to do. Your marriage will only be saved if it is saved through your faith in the cross and allowing God to come in and save your marriage. If your spouse comes along and says, we're not going to church anymore. If we are, I'm divorcing you. Looks like there's a divorce coming. You understand that? Let God be true and ever man a liar. Ever man means your husband too. Means your wife too. Oh, we're to try to save our marriages at all costs except disobedience to God. I was blind, but now I see. What do I see? The truth. What do I see? The word more clearly? The path as it really is? That everybody needs to be loved? Everybody needs to find that place of mercy and grace that God's offering? What we have is not just something we got here. What we have is what God wants the whole world to have. A knowledge of his love, grace, and mercy that he has wiped the slate clean and that everybody has an opportunity to start completely over every day. Not just one time, every day. We're a brand new creation every day. Amen. Behold, can you see it? Do you see that everything was made new? That's why he put the word behold there. Look at it. Can you see it? That you're a new creation. Doesn't matter what the mirror says. Doesn't matter what your co-workers say. Doesn't matter how bad you've messed up all your life. God says you are a brand new creation and you never age. You never grow old. You're a brand new creation. Can you see it today? Can you see it today? The more clearly you walk and learn the word, you're going to see more clearly. The washing of the water of the word. We all got room for growth. Every one of us. We've all got room for growth. We've all got room to be able to see more clearly than we've ever seen before. We can be growing. We need to be moving forward, not growing complacent with where we're at and what's going on and not letting everything on the job or in the classroom or in the family or whatever. We need to keep moving forward. We hope they all come, but if they don't, I've got to keep going. Let me say that again. I want them all to come, but if they don't, I've got to keep going. 
Amen. No, brother, we just got to wait on them. No, you ain't waiting on them. You're not called to wait on them. You're called to deny yourself and take up your cross every day and follow Jesus. Amen. The reality. Believing to see the reality. You know, the world tells people like us, y'all just need to come on back to reality, brother. All that stuff and all, all that church, all that, all that, all that, man, y'all, y'all need to come down to reality. And, and, and the fact of the matter is, we're the only ones on the planet. And I'm not talking about Crossway Church. I'm talking about true, born-again Christians who truly are believing in what Christ did at Calvary. We're the, re, we're the only reality on the planet. Because when it's all said and done, who's going to be left? Just believers. And nobody else will. So you know what everybody else will become? Nothing. They won't be there. What's that mean if something's not there? It means it ain't real. We need to live in the reality right now. That means walk in truth. Jesus stood before Pilate. He said, look here. My kingdom's not of this world right now. That's what he said. If my kingdom were this world, my servants would come and fight and I would not be delivered to the Jews. And every day our declaration needs to be, my kingdom is not of this world right now. But one day it's going to be. One day it's going to be. We're coming back to reign on this earth. Who's the Lord giving the earth to? The meek. Who are the meek? Those who have eyes to see that Jesus Christ is Lord and provided everything at Calvary we would ever need. That's the meek. Not the weak, but the meek. Stand with me this morning. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Why don't you just tell him thank you this morning for loving you like he does. For being faithful to forgive you every single time you ask him to. Oh, Lord, we love you this morning. We praise you. We thank you for your presence this morning, Lord, as we sang the high praises of our God. As we worshiped you this morning, Lord, I sensed your presence in this place. Lord, I sense your presence even as I'm preaching your word today, as I watch the people, as they listen, Lord, and they want to learn the truth. They're hungering for you. They want to serve you, Lord. They, they want their marriages to be what you've called them to be. They, they want their children to end up with the fruit that you've called them to have. And, oh, Lord, they want to be found walking in the place that you're pleased with. That place where Christ flows through their lives. Christ is seen daily. A resurrected Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. In our lives, oh, what a fortune. Oh, what a blessing and a treasure. That Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer, can live through us each and every day as we humble ourselves by placing our faith in that old cross where you died for us. You laid your life down that we might find our lives in you. And I thank you, Lord, this day for opening eyes in this place, in this room, and even those that watch online. God, I pray that you'd let every person know that this wasn't a message of condemnation. This is a message, Lord, encouraging your people just to come back to the place they can see. They can know from where you've brought them and they can see clearly where you're heading, where you're taking them to. They can see just enough each and every day to run this race one more day. That they don't have to struggle and fight against sin. All they've got to do is keep trusting in what you did at Calvary. Just keep trusting that that's where you defeated the devil. We can't today. Oh, we can cause him to flee and run. You say, if we resist him steadfast in that faith. That faith that defeated him at Calvary. 
And I know there are people in this place today who've been struggling in, in relationships, struggling in their finances, struggling, Lord, most of all in their relationship with you. They just couldn't seem to find that place where they need to be standing with you, that place where they can walk and know that you're there, know that you're in charge, know that they are a brand new creation, that they've been bought, purchased, and paid for by the blood. And Lord, I pray that you would touch their hearts today and let them have more than a mental awareness of your presence each and every day, but that you are there to make yourself known to them each day of our lives. Not through just a Sunday service, a Wednesday night service, but every day, all day, our minds can be stayed upon you and we can walk in that perfect peace that you supplied by the blood of your cross that our marriages don't have to drift apart and become distant that we can become closer than we've ever been even the day we were married we can love each other more we can walk hand in hand and be in agreement that you are the son of the living God the king of kings and the lord of lords and that you are the God of our marriages that you're the God of our children And our children can look at us and see that we may not be perfect, but we're trusting in the perfect one. And we're headed in a perfect direction. I thank you, Lord, today for every person that was able to hear this message. For I know you're reaching not only to those that are lost and don't know you, but for those that have known you, but they've forgotten you. Oh, their lips say they haven't, but their lives prove they have. Oh, we give you praise today for calling us, Lord. Not only the first time, but calling us back to that place of true faith and grace. Oh, that the people of God today would just come back to faith and grace. Just come back to the blood. Just come back to the cross. Just come back. Oh, for there, there's green pastures. There, there's green pastures to lay down and rest in Him. There there's streams that you can drink from. There there's a table established for you to eat of each and every day, even in the presence of your enemies. Oh, there our cup runs over. Oh, come back today to Calvary. If you're here today and you've never been born again, you've never asked God to forgive you of your sins and trusted in Christ having died to forgive you of those sins, I want you to come to this altar right now. Not even go ask for lifted hands this morning. I just want you to come right now and say, I come because I want to be born again. I come believing in Christ. Anybody here not born again, never been saved, not sure. If you're not sure, I want you to come. I want you to come this morning. And next, I want those of you who've been found wanting to live for God but just not understanding why it's not working out, I want you to come to this altar this morning. Don't worry about what anybody else is thinking. Don't worry about anybody else. Just come to this altar, just you and the Lord. Just come to this altar and tell Him, Lord, I'm sorry, forgive me. I know what I've heard today is the truth and I'm coming back to truth I know it's been lip service but I'm coming back to truth some more of you need to come this morning you've been found like it in this place some more of you in this room need to come it's been lip service the power's not been there it's only been lip service it's only when I find myself in utter ruin do I cry out oh I need you every day more of you need to come it's been lip service oh today it can begin in the heart I can trust today again. I've heard the truth. I believe this truth that it's all about you, Jesus, and what you did at Calvary. I've not been instructing my children in the way they should go. I'm letting them get away with this and get away with that just because their friends are doing it. Listen, we don't raise our kids based on what other kids are doing. We raise our kids based on what the Word of God says. Oh, come to this altar today. Ask the Lord to help you. I promise you, He will. I promise you He will. He's shown you this morning the way is the way of the cross. Watch what He'll do for you if you'll just surrender and repent this morning. Watch what He'll do in your children's lives. Watch what He'll do in every arena of your life. It doesn't matter what it might be. Your health, your money, it makes no difference. He can do it. You young people, you've been struggling with worldly stuff. Your mind's drifting away into things on television in Hollywood. You need to come to this altar this morning and get right with God. 
You need to come and get right with God today. God's not calling us unto the world. He's calling us unto holiness. He's calling us unto virtue and glory. He's calling us to be a light unto the world. Hallelujah. That shines brighter and brighter. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord, for eyes to see that the book of Acts has not ended. Oh, thank you, Lord, for eyes to see and ears to hear, Lord, a lie when we know it. Oh, that the book of Acts is still going on today. The church still being baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. If you're here today and you've not received that, I want you to come and receive that of the Lord today. Hallelujah. He wants His church baptized with the Holy Ghost. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Oh, I pray there would be a hunger in the hearts, God, of your people. That we'd no longer live on what our co-workers say and just what we've heard, Lord. But we'd get in the Word ourselves and we'd see what you said concerning every area that we are doubtful of, God. Not going to ask one single man, but just trusting in what you say in your Word. Your Word declares, Lord, that we have the anointing within us, the truth if you're your children. And that we need not that any man teach us. Oh, but we're learning of Christ as we just trust your word. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, help help your word become forever settled in our hearts just as it is in heaven. Oh, today is going to be a day of great change for some of you. Some of you are going to have a great day of change today because you're surrendering to the Lord. We're not leaning into our own understanding. It's not about what we think. It's about what God has said. And He has promised to establish our thinking if we commit our works unto Him. Yet Jesus taught that our works were simply to believe in the one that God sent. To believe in Christ and what He did in Calvary. And through that work alone, God will establish our thinking. And when our minds run rampant, the Holy Ghost is there. Oh, the Holy Ghost is there to redirect our thinking back to the place of the Lord. Hallelujah. Just trust Him today. He's faithful. He's faithful. The things that are out of alignment and out of balance, He is the one who causes everything to be done decently and in order. He is the one who opens the eyes of the blind. He's the ones. He is the one who picks up those who stagger and trip and fall. He is the one we cannot even pick ourselves up. He has to pick us up to move us on. And I'm thanking you today, Lord God, for those, Lord, that may be in this house, God, that need picked up today. Oh, I pray that you'd pick them up today. On this very day, Lord God, that you'd pick them up in the name of Jesus. You believe Jesus died for you on the cross? He did. You believe, all you got to do is believe it. It ain't something you got to go and do to prove it. You just believe it. He loves you. He's the one who puts you here. You know what we say? We say, well, my mom and daddy did that. But you know there are men and women trying to have babies all over the earth that can't without God. We can't even be born the first time. But he wants to. He wants to cause you to be born again today. And I believe He's already saved you because you already believe. You believe in Him and what He did for you at Calvary. He saved you. You're saved. You know, we say we're going to say this prayer and we'll say a prayer. But I tell you what, if you're believing, you're already saved. Because it ain't about no prayer. It ain't about no church service. It's about you believing that He loved you so much. He gave His life for you. He died for you. He loves you that much. When, no, when sometimes in your life you feel like nobody loves you, His love will never change. It's as great as it always will be. What's your name, Elise? Let's pray together. Just pray what I pray. Father, I come to you today through the blood of Jesus because I believe in Him, that He died for me. I believe in my heart today I'm not just saying it with my lips. I'm trusting in His finished work. And I believe I'm saved. And I can now see. I once was blind. And I didn't know how much you loved me. But now I do. Because you've given me eyes to see. 
you put your love in my heart and I'm born again can't be taken from me I can't be plucked out of your hand and I love you Lord strengthen me Lord let me be a witness unto you every day of my life thank you for saving me Lord use me now in Jesus name Amen glory to God hallelujah don't ever forget he loves you don't ever forget this moment when you believe you will never forget it you'll never forget it he reached and you grabbed his hand today through believing in the cross that's how we take the hand of the Lord every single day through believing in his cross hallelujah he loves you Elise and you're in the family of God now Satan had you but Jesus took you away from the devil hallelujah glory to God you belong in the kingdom now hallelujah glory to God Lord bless Julian this morning with healing in his body Lord God I'm reminded Lord this morning of how it was very simple thing for you just to make spittle out of dirt and put it on the blind man's eyes and tell him to go wash and he obeyed you and he went and washed and he came back a seeing. Lord today for us the cross is that spittle the cross is our going to be washed by your blood so today I declare over my brother right here along with all those who can agree that Jesus Lord you're the same yesterday today and forever and if you've healed one you'll heal anyone your word is not changed you've told us to covet the very gifts of the Holy Ghost so this morning we're asking you Lord to touch Julian to drive out what the thief has done to this body that you call your temple and in your name Jesus we declare wholeness we declare liberty from the bondage of infirmity we declare wholeness in the name of Jesus and we believe you Lord God for healing and wholeness in his body in Jesus name everybody said amen glory to God hallelujah hallelujah freedom nothing like it only found in Christ Let's sing it one more time before we leave. Oh, he's worth it. Somebody's born again. You know, I'm expecting the Lord to just grow Julian out of leg. You know, he's missing one of his legs. I'm really expecting to see that. But you know what? If the Lord did that, can't compare to a soul being saved. Both are miracles. But one is just a temporary blessing while the other is an eternal blessing. Don't, let the, don't ever let the devil tell you you ain't saved, he'll try you'll make mistakes and he'll tell you, see there, you're not saved just tell him you know what devil I didn't get saved by not making any mistakes I got saved by believing in the one who never made a mistake and died for me so that all my mistakes could be forgiven and I'm following him 
Hallelujah. We're blessed. Blessed. We serve a good God who only does wondrous things. I hope you got a better glimpse of him today. I know somebody did. Elise got a good glimpse of him. You know what kind of glimpse you need every day? The same kind you started with. That's what kind of eyesight we need. The same kind we got when we were born again. Oh, what, what a day that was. Can you imagine being blind for 40 years and then seeing everything? That's the way it is spiritually. God just opens your eyes through your faith in the blood. And you begin to see. And you say, my Lord, if I'd known it was this good, I'd have done it a long time ago. <laughs> Glory to God. Well, God loves you. We love you. We'll see you tonight in Wake Village at 5 o'clock for those of you that are coming. And we'll just march on in the same message tonight. Glory to God.